two, three. Testing, one, two, three, one, two. this morning. It's good to be here with you all. Um, it's welcome to the first Sunday in Lent as we walk toward the season of Easter already in 2023. Um, if you look at the church right after Easter in Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 4 and throughout the book of Acts, one thing, one phrase that is used is they met for mutual encouragement. Um, I'm encouraged by you today. I hope we can encourage each other today as we study God's word together and I spend time in prayer together and around um, the sacraments together. So, um, and if you need encouragement, just let someone know. In fact, there's a very specific person you can know, and that is your elder. And today we will be installing Jerry Raditz, who's being added to the board of elders. And very soon you will be receiving, you'll, you'll know which elder list you are on. So if you ever just need encouragement, um, feel free to reach out to your elder. So we'll, we'll be letting you know who your elder is in the, in the week to come. Um, today we're beginning a new series called Forgive Us Our Debts as We Forgive Our Debtors. That's our series for Lent. Um, as we engage this, we'll also do a Bible study in the book of Galatians, which is, of course, one of Luther's favorites, uh, the one that he always ran back to, especially um, very appropriate for the time he lived in. For those of you worshiping online with us, welcome. We are glad you are here. We are glad you are part of our church today. You can download a copy of our bulletin online for all of you worshiping in here. You have your bulletins. You can also follow along on the screen in front of you. Let's join together in a word of prayer. We pray, Father, that as we enter your presence today, we would be aware that we're standing in the presence of the holy God of the universe, the uncreated one, the one outside of everything we know. Um, today, Father, we focus on the mess that we've made and the way in which you show us the promise to fix it. We pray, Father, that you would be with us in this moment, be with us in this hour, be with us in this time, that you would grow us, strengthen us, and encourage us as we encourage one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. I encourage you to rise as you're able as we share Christ's peace together.
without within from infection and uncleanness from the leprosy of sin wash your robes and make them white ye shall walk with god in light from its sorrow and contrition guilty free remission here the troubled peace may find help this fountain will restore they that drink shall thirst no more they that drink shall live forever tis a soul renewing flood God is Faithful God will never break his covenant of blood. Signed when our Redeemer died, sealed when he was glorified. We gather today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive, will forgive our, our sins and, and cleanse, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God, we, we confess, confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. unclean. We have, we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. And receive these words of forgiveness for you today. That Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, it is my joy to share with you the forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin, sin is, is covered. covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and, and in whose spirit is there no is deceit. No death. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away, through my, my groaning all day, day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by, as the, by the heat, heat of, of summer. summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I, I said, said I, will I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters, they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin, whose sin is, covered. is covered. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world to the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
The first reading this morning is from Genesis 3, verses 1 to 15. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, She took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans chapter 5, verses 12 to 19. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given. But sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift of the gra- by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. If, because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness lends to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. (coughs) The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 4. Glory to you, O Lord. The people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light, and for those dwelling in the region and shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. From that time Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And together with believers around the world and throughout history, we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, our, our Lord, Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended, he descended into hell. hell. The and third the day he rose again from the dead. dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe believe in the Holy Spirit, the the Holy Holy Christian Christian Church, 
the communion, the communion of, of saints, saints the, forgiveness the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection, the resurrection of, of the body, and the, and the life, life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with some announcements this morning. Good morning. I have several things to share with you today. The first is um, to remind you now that Lent has started that we have midweek services coming up. And so there are the dates up there on the screen. We will have a potluck beforehand so you can eat well and then come and worship with us. The second one is a new and exciting thing, which is a men's fellowship event. That means only guys can go. And it is a barbecue at the Losey's home on next Sunday, right? Next Sunday um, at 5.30. And there's some instructions about what to do there. But all men are most heartily invited and to bring a friend. And ladies have to figure out something else to do. Okay. Um, the third thing that I want to talk to you about is that we have, as you've seen before, some red t-shirts that we often wear at events for ORLC. And we've used them up, and it's time to get a new one. And so we are putting out a call for those who are designers to design our new t-shirt which means that you can submit a, a paper copy of something that would be a design, or you can send a digital copy to Pastor Harry either way, in his box or to him electronically, if you have an idea for a design for our new t-shirt. Um, and finally, I want to talk to you about a couple of resources you have available to you for Lent. The first one Pastor Harry mentioned last week, and it's this devotional booklet called Trust in the Lord. Those are available to you. Um, on the Welcome Center, you can pick one of those up. The second one is uh, this mite box. Now, we've seen this with uh, LWML before, but now we have a special opportunity opportunity during the week, the weeks before Palm Sunday, because Palm Sunday is our deadline, to save our mites and put them in the box and bring them in as a sort of uh, example to us of sacrificial giving and trusting in the Lord who provides for us. Um, I will tell you also that um, the designated offerings from the mite boxes will go to uh, an organization in Dallas called the Family Place, and it is a place that provides support and assistance to people who are victims of domestic violence. Um, so pick up a box. They're in the baskets out on the Welcome Center also. Put your money in it. I think a dollar folded up will fit too. And um, bring them in on Palm Sunday. And now finally, I want to mention that the children have their opportunity to go out for a special lesson. Mrs. Jennifer is going to be doing that today. Raise your hand, Mrs. Jennifer. There she is. So if you have kids who would like to go, please follow Mrs. Jennifer out, and we will continue with our sermon hymn. Yeah. 
clarity to understand in the small way we can um, what you have to say to us today, um, that as we enter into the season of Lent, we would not leave the other season of Lent completely unchanged, um, but every day we would let you work on us, um, that slowly and slowly and slowly we would come to look more like you. We give you thanks, Father, for your mercy to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I have a short theological quiz for you today, so hopefully you're a little awake. Um, we're going to start with a softball question, okay? So on Mount Sinai, when Moses brought down the two tablets, how many commandments were on it? Ten. Okay, so start with, start easy. Um, we're going to get, escalate a little bit, okay? Second question for you. The classic Christian doctrine that we are born into a state of sin is called what? A, classic sin, B, original sin, or three, or C, inherited sin? Original, original sin. Okay, good. We got a couple of people awake in here. That's good. Two more questions. A little bit harder and then a little bit harder. Um, so this is your next question. A sinful act that describes when you actively mistreat someone is called a sin of what? Commission. Commission, okay. A sinful act that describes when you should have done something but chose not to is a sin of what? Omission. Omission. Okay, good. So wow, you guys are with it. Last one, hardest one. Although not necessarily taught in the Lutheran tradition, in the Catholic tradition, the two types of sins we commit are called what sins and what sins? Okay, yeah, okay. Not quite so confident there. Um, mortal sins and venial sins is the other one, okay? Um, mortal sins being sins that bring death and venial sins being the lesser, uh, less significant sins. Um, of course, Lutherans don't teach that because we just teach that every sin brings death the same, right? So, um, just I want to make sure really you're awake um, and today, uh, we were venturing into the season of Lent. This is a practice that's 1,400 years old. It was initiated in 600 AD. Um, it's been practiced this way in, in a variety of ways for a long, long time. Um, it's a season of reflection. It's a season of repentance. It's a season of self-denial. It's a season of gratitude. Um, and this Lent, I want us to focus on one very specific theme, and that is forgiveness. Um, and maybe you've walked down the road of forgiveness before or studied it in depth. Maybe this is, it's been a little while, um, but it's so important because in our gospel text today, we see that the very first teaching that Jesus shares publicly in his ministry is repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. When you repent, what happens? You are forgiven. Forgiveness, he's setting the tone with forgiveness in his ministry. Over and over again, we see him talking about turning away from sin, embracing God's forgiveness for you in Jesus, right? Without forgiveness, none of Lent makes any sense. None of church makes any sense. His desire to forgive is the greatest love that he shows us, and his ability to forgive is, his, is the greatest promise he gives us and power that he shows us in our life. Um, so <laughs> this Lent, uh, we're going to practice being forgiven by God, and you may say, well, we don't need to practice that. It's just a reality, but over the course of the next six weeks, we're going to talk about different themes, how to forgive yourself, how to for how to forgive someone who is unrepentant, these sorts of things um, that, that deal with uh, this life of forgiveness within us and around us. Um, and so hopefully we can do that because, forgiving, be, because being forgiven and accepting grace takes discipline and work, and forgiving others requires dif discipline and work. The, the reality that you're forgiven does not require any work, but the ability to accept it and receive it and believe it Sometimes that, that takes some work, so we're going to talk about that, okay? And putting this work in is a major part of our spiritual growth, um, and there's a very specific reason why. You know why? You and I, as believers, by Jesus, were called to love other people. That should be Christianity 101. I don't think anybody in here is going to disagree with that, that our call is to love other people. And Jesus says this in Luke 7, 47, right after the woman pours nard on his feet. He says, therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little loves little. 
If we cannot learn how to forgive or learn how to be forgiven, we cannot learn how to love and be loved. And that's why we're doing this. And that's what Lent is about. And so I want to start today by talking about sin. So the title of my, mess, my message today is The Mess We've Made. Um, and this is where we're going to start today, okay? We live in a time, we live in an age, um, when the concept of sin either is non-existent in people's mind, you know, that, that it's either largely lost, or it's kind of been muddied and it's been entangled up in these legalistic arguments over right and wrong. So if I were to ask you, what is sin— how would you answer that question? Going against God's will, okay? The, the, literally, in Greek, the word is missing the mark. That's what, it's, that's what the word is in, in Greek, in the Bible. That's what sin is, is missing the mark. But often when I say, what is sin, the first thing that pops into our heads, and this is not a bad thing, it's a result of our confirmation training. It's all of it is, you know, violations of the Ten Commandments, right? That's why we learn the Ten Commandments. Um, in our minds, sometimes without realizing it, we tend to rank sins. Murder, sexual sins, you know, stealing, those are big ones. You don't get away with that. But things like coveting, and disrespecting authority, uh, gossiping, ignoring the Sabbath, having a consumer mindset, being lazy, those are less important. It's really pretty easy to get, get away with those sins in the church, isn't it, sometimes? Um, they feel less important to us. And very quickly, when we think of sin, we think of lists. These ones are bigger sins. These ones are smaller sins. As long as you don't commit the mortal sins, right? You're okay. The venial sins, eh, they're venial. It's fine, you know. Um, <clears throat> but we don't believe that in the Lutheran Church. We believe that sin is sin. And a, a bad thought about someone is the same as murdering that person, as Jesus tells us in the Sermon on the Mount. So here's a basic question for you. If you violate a commandment, are you sinning? This is not a trick question. Okay. You can answer it. It's about, there's another softball. Or if you violate a commandment, are you sinning? Okay, yes, thank you. We're, we're all on the same page there. Good. Um, hopefully we would all agree on that point. Um, but I, I want us to zoom back beyond just violating a commandment thinking about sin. So when Scripture talks about missing the mark, that's which is the Greek a term for sin in, 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 in Greek. It's, it literally means to miss the mark. Um, the mark is not a specific action in a list, okay? The mark is not, well, you should have given 10% and you only gave 2%. The mark is not, you shouldn't have stolen $20, you, you shouldn't have stolen anything. The mark is something different, okay? The mark in Scripture is the standard of perfection established by God and evidenced by Jesus. So missing the mark actually has often very little to do with lists of actions that you've done wrong and everything to do with the fact that our standards are off. So there is one command in the Bible that no one has ever been even come close to following, and that is this commandment when Jesus says, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. And that doesn't show up on a list, does it? Because when we compare anything in our life with perfection— suddenly check boxes and lists begin to seem a little petty um, if we start counting that way. So I'd like to talk about the law of God when you take it as a whole. Because as Lutherans, we believe in the law-gospel dynamic, right? The separation of law and gospel. The law is everything that has to do with our, what we do for God and, our, and, our, and, and what, that which brings death to our life. And the gospel is everything that God does for, off, for us and which brings life to our life. life life to us, right? So we all live in various systems, right? We live in a country that has a government. We work jobs. We live in families where there are rules, written or unwritten rules, right? Um, we go to church. We purchase goods in supermarkets. We drive on streets that have traffic laws. We take our kids to school. We vote in various elections. We serve on different committees in different ways, and each one of these things is a different system that we're a part of with a different set of rules that we're a part of, written or unwritten. And if you think about each one of these systems, every single system in your life is broken. Some more so than others, but every single system that you are a part of in your life is broken. Our government, anything broken in that system? Okay. Are there things in your family that cause you stress or don't work well? Probably. Okay. Are, is your job free from problems? I'm guessing not. Is your child's school perfect? No. Do any of these systems treat everyone the same? 
Even at our church, we don't treat everyone the same. As much as we try to, we don't because our system is broken, right? You can see in some form of violation of every single one of the commandments at play in each of the systems of our life. Life isn't fair. It treats some people well, it treats other people poorly, and each system is the same way. In every system, someone winds up taking advantage of someone else, whether it's intentional or not. And this brokenness occurs just as much in church as it does outside of church. Um, So here's some examples for you. Okay, I have a picture. Isabel, can you show the picture? Um, According to Christianity Today, which is the largest leading Christian journalism company in the United States of America, $59 billion were embezzled from churches in 2022. Um, The estimation by 2050 is that $170 billion will be embezzled from churches. It keeps going up and up and up. You know how much was spent on international mission in 2022? $45 $45 billion to $52 billion. More money was embezzled, embezzled from churches in 2022 than was spent on international missions in 2022. Um, divorce rates in the church are pretty much comparable with divorce rates in, in, the, in the broader society. Uh, they're a little lower, but not by much. Um, the Gospel Coalition, another very well-respected organization, predicts that around 64% of men in the church view pornography on a regular monthly basis. Churches are among the most segregated entries, entities in our countries today, socioeconomically and r- racially, um, with 80, and also politically, with 80% of churches consisting of a majority of one people group. Many of you have seen the effects of churches acting as incubators for gossip, incubators for hate-filled language, other sinful activities. Right now, at this very moment, our own LCMS is confronting the influence of white nationalists in our church body. The church is a broken system. It's a broken system. The effects of sin are real in our life. And it says in Romans 8 that all of creation cries out in groaning with words that we can't comprehend. Because everything in our life is broken. I want us to turn to our reading for Genesis today to see why this is important. So this is the story of the fall of Adam and Eve. And in our story, Adam and Eve have just shared this piece of fruit from the tree that God told them was off limits. Satan tempted them to eat the fruit they did. Genesis chapter 3, verses 7 through 10. Listen, what happens, the very first thing that they do when they eat the fruit, listen to this, what happens. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. This this is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They had already known good. The only knowledge they gained from this is the knowledge of evil, right? Um, And they knew that they were naked. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths, And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees in the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, said to him, Where are you? As if he needed to ask that. And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? And the man said, Listen to this. The woman whom you gave me, she gave me the fruit. And I ate it. What's the very first thing that happens? Passing blame. The very, very first moment. It's someone else's problem. It's someone else's fault. I'm, I'm in the right on this. Right? This, isn't, this isn't on me, God. They become aware of a couple of things. They become aware of, of blame. That's the act that they begin to get. But they also become aware of shame for the very first time. He was ashamed that he was naked. They become aware of the imperfect that they never could see before. It was there, right? The fact that they were naked was always there, but they could never see that. So God confronts them about the fact that they know that they're naked, and even though God knows the answer, where are you, why are you naked, he wants to hear from Adam, and what he sees is what we see, passing the blame. Adam and Eve begin to think of sin as a list of rules. We broke your rule, God. We ate of that tree. But when God is addressing them after speaking with them, he says this, the problem won't be that you do wrong things. That will happen, right? But that's not going to be your problem. The problems you face moving forward will be systemic. The system of childbirth, that will be broken, Eve, and it's going to hurt. The system of working the ground, that will be cursed, Adam, and it's going to hurt. The system you had in mind to destroy me, Satan, That is gonna, you will be cursed because of that system that you have 
brought into the world. It's interesting how often we hear people state things like, this is the plan to eliminate global poverty. Have you heard that? Or here's how we get rid of racism. Or this is the law that will stop unnecessary gun violence. And yet, from the fall of creation, the effects of sin have crippled us. They have killed us. From our earliest historical records, poverty has existed. Children have starved to death from hunger. Wars have ravaged our world. Disease continues to plague us. Slavery has been a constant for us. And one way we contribute to the mess that we are in is that far too often we think that the solutions are within us to fix it, to fix the messes of the world around us. Yeah, the system's not great, but it's fixable. We can get there. If we just put our heads together, if we just do it right, if those people that are wrong just shut up already, then we can fix this. And the mess of the heart is the same sometimes, too. When you've got those problems, when you've got those temptations, when you've got those sins, when you've got those things that just keep plaguing you, and keep plaguing you, the anxieties and the doubts that don't ever go away, we think if we were just more faithful in prayer, if we just read the Bible a little bit more, if we just surrounded ourselves with better people, then we could fix this. Sin isn't just a bad habit that's hard to quit. It's a lot more than that. Um, it's a lot more than saying a curse word or having a short temper with someone. It's more the, than the obvious aggressive acts of destruction like murder and rape and abortion and terrorism and embezzlement, right? Um, I'm, I've shared this example to some in the past, but I'm going to share it again um, because it's easy to understand I carry a cell phone. Who many, how many of you carry a cell phone? Probably the vast majority of us in this room, right? I have an iPhone. It was made somewhere in China. I know that because I carry my cell phone with, with me because I purchased the phone I am supporting a system that causes young children in China to have to dip their hands in battery acid to make my phone. Um, I know that my money feeds corporate greed. I know that because I carry an iPhone, Planned Parenthood is receiving greater funding because Apple Incorporated supports them. And yet, I also see it's necessary to have a phone to do my job. Am I sinning? Yes. I am part of a broken system of sin that I contribute to actively by purchasing a phone. Something that may seem innocuous to a lot of people, may seem fine to a lot of people. I ask for forgiveness from God for the fact that I am willfully participating in a broken system. I have not yet boycotted Apple because of their broken systems, and if I did so, I'd have to boycott every single product I use because every single product I use or thing I have in my life is tainted by sin as part of this broken system of sin, right? When we turn sin just into a bad habit, we lose this greater sense of the cosmic war going on around us. So as we be begin the journey to understanding and living in forgiveness, we need to start by being honest with ourselves. We cannot minimize how severely we participate in the pain of the world. It's not everyone else's fault. It's not the terrorists out there. It's not the liberals or the, or the conservatives out there. It's us. We participate in it. We do it ourselves. Bad people aren't limited to school shooters or con artists or gangbangers, right? You and I are pain producers in this world around us. We mess up in big and small ways, and really, there is no valid excuse for it. And until we understand the depth of that, we will never understand the depth of our need for Jesus in our life. Here is truth. Jesus didn't come into your life to fix your bad habits. Okay, Jesus didn't come into your life to get you to swear a little less. You know, um, Jesus didn't come into your life so you drive an electric car. You know, he, it, things are different than that. He came into your life. He did not die on a cross. He did not rise three days later so that fewer people would finally, st more people would finally start tithing the way that they're supposed to be doing, right? Those things are tangential to the main purpose of Jesus. This is God's main purpose. This is from Paul, Romans chapter 5, verses 18 and 19, our second reading for today. Therefore, as one, tras one trespass led to, the, led to condemnation and death for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. Jesus didn't come to make you good. He came to make you alive and give you life in him. The world is infinitely more broken than you realize, and I realize. Um, but it's also true that God is infinitely more loving and compassionate than we realize, or I realize. Our God is gracious and compassionate 
It says in the scripture, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. And he has the power to make beauty out of all of our mess. So I'm going to finish with this story. On Ash Wednesday, a young girl came to the rail at an Anglican church to receive ashes on her forehead, as many of you did this past Wednesday. As soon as she heard the words, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return, um, she received that ash cross on her head. She turned to her mom and whispered, does my ash look all right? (laughs) Confronting sin starts with yourself. We want our ash to look all right, don't we? We want it to look all right, because then we can justify ourselves a little bit. Um, But ash, no matter how nice it looks, is still dead. And we believe in a God who doesn't make beauty from ugliness, but who makes beauty from ashes. Dust you are, dust you shall return. Repent and believe the good news. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to invite Jerry Raditz forward um, today. Um, we have uh, a list of elders, and um, the board of elders wanted to bring someone else on, and Jerry um, has been brought on to serve as a, an elder and has been approved by the board of directors. So um, we are redoing, like I mentioned, um, Jeff Schaefer, our head elder, is redoing elder lists, and you'll be knowing who your elder is very soon. Um, but today we have the joy of welcoming Jerry as an official part of the team. So um, if you would... Uh, Join me as we read God's word today. Beloved in the Lord, Holy Scripture admonishes us that all things should be done decently and in order. To that end, the Constitution and bylaws of this congregation establish various offices to which men and women are elected and appointed to serve. In so doing, the church follows the example of the early Christian church as described in Acts chapter 6. The twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Jerry Raditz has been appointed to serve as elder of our church. Jerry, you have been chosen to fill specific offices and positions of responsibility at our Redeemer. You are to work with the pastors that our lives together in Christ may be orderly and pleasing in his sight. You are to see that the services of God's house are held at proper times and that the word of God is purely preached and taught according to the Lutheran confessions, that the sacraments of Christ are administered according to his institution, that provision is made for the Christian instruction of young and old, that the erring are admonished and that discipline is maintained. You are to see that the temporal affairs of the congregation are properly administered and that proper support is provided for the workers of this congregation. You are to uh, to assist in caring for the poor and the sick, in cultivating harmony among the members, in promoting the general welfare of the congregation, and in furthering the kingdom of Christ here and throughout the world. While holiness of life and obedience to Christ are expected of all members of the congregation, it is especially important that you, as office bearer in his church, show yourself by word and example to be faithful to him in service and Christian devotion. In the presence of God and of this congregation, I therefore ask you, do you accept the, duty, the, you accept the office entrusted to you, and do you promise faithfully to carry out your duties Trusting in the Lord and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of the evangelical Lutheran church. If so, then answer, I do. Beloved in the Lord, this question is for you. You have heard the promise, uh, promises of faithfulness spoken by Jerry, whom you've, elect, whom you've appointed to serve as officer and an elder of our church. Do you promise to support him in his work, to remember him in your prayers, and to work with him to the best of the abilities that God has given you? so that he may be glorified and his work be done in our midst? If so, then answer, we do. Brothers and, sis- uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, Jerry, I install you as elder of our Redeemer Lutheran Church in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty and most merciful God, enlighten and strengthen you in your office, that you may be good and faithful stewards to the glory of his name and the good of his people. Amen. Let us pray. 
Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you have raised up Jerry for work among your people and our other elders as well. We humbly implore you to grant all of them by your Holy Spirit those gifts needed for the faithful carrying out of their tasks, most especially wisdom, strength, and willing hearts. Let your blessing rest on this congregation. Strengthen the faith, quicken the love, and enkindle the zeal of its members, that your name may be glorified, and that here and in all places under heaven the kingdom of your Son may be advanced. We remember with thanksgiving those who have faithfully served your people and have now completed their time of service. We pray that in the end of days, with all your faithful people, we may hear the voice of Christ saying, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you for, from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go in the name of the Lord. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The Almighty and most merciful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Please rise as you're able as we come before the Lord in prayer. Today in, the, in, in our prayers, in addition to the ones you can find listed, um, uh, Hannah Schaefer is in labor as we speak um, with baby Valerie. So Lord willing, there will be a baby at the end of the service. So we'll pray for mama and for baby. Um, little Valerie's coming today. Um, and we pray also for the family of Bobby Allen, a friend of a number of people in our congregation who was taken to his heavenly home uh, this past week. Let's come before the Lord in prayer. God, we just uh, acknowledge first, we start by acknowledging that the heartbeat we have and the breath that we breathe and the movements that we make and everything in our life comes from you and is given to us as a gift from you. We thank you for this gift of life. We thank you for the gift of salvation and freedom and joy in you. We pray today for Weldon the Third. We pray for Matt. And we pray also for baby Valerie as she's having her birthday today. Um, that you would be with each of these individuals, strengthen them and carry them and encourage them in their life of faith and in their walk with you. And we pray, Father, that you would bring Valerie to the waters of baptism. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, I pray today for Milton, Benjamin, Thomas, and Valerie, for Philip and Chris, Krista and Marty, Alonzo, Cecilia, and Angela, for the family of Bobby Allen, for Ellen and Pat, Lindsay and Bill, David, Randall, Merle, Karen, Paula, Dorothy, Andrew, Samel, Javian, Jackie, Trudy, and Ellis, Marianne, Bill, Maria, Lydia, and Karen, for James, Bob, and Rose, and all those who need to know uh, that you are near to them. We believe in the miracle power of healing. We also believe, Father, in the hope of the life to come. So, Lord, in your will and in your mercy, if you would bring healing to these individuals, we pray that we on this earth could ex experience the joy of their presence here. And Father, for all those who mourn the loss of life, that they would see you and your resurrection and be so encouraged and made alive in that. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the people of Ukraine, for the people of Syria, for the people of Turkey, for all of the various crises happening around the world right now. We pray for our disaster response leaders in this country and around the world, that you would be with those who, who provide aid, initial aid to these places of need. We pray that you would bring healing and hope um, and bring life in places where death reigns. Lord, in your mercy. In our prayer. We pray for those who protect us and watch over us. For Andrew, Jeff, Josh, and Huntington. We pray, Father, that you would encourage them and strengthen them in their service to our nation and in their service to you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heal us, those broken parts of us. We forget our broken sometimes, God, as we come to your table today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We pray now the prayer our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses. trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our 
our Lord Jesus Christ the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he gave him thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after the supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And he said, drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament and my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. 
please rise as you're able. As we go our way today, let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his perfect and his everlasting peace. Amen. with